Mr. Plevrakis, what do you think are the major challenges in decarbonization right now? Well, it's a complicated answer and it, has a, it's a, it requires a multifaceted uh, response. However, if I would uh, highlight a couple of things would be, um, first of all, um, the level of readiness that our industry uh, has in order to respond to the uh, short-term requirements that are going to be kicked off in less than a year from now. Um, how well informed and prepared and ready we are to face the midterm with regards to carbon intensity reductions and follow that decarbonization trajectory until 2030. There are also some regulatory developments uh, that are in the making and we hope that they will actually present some sort of clarity with regards to what type of tools we can use in order to align ourselves with that decarbonization trajectory. On the technological side, we do have the tools to start uh, planning and, and implementing decarbonization strategies. And we see that the technological solutions are also being developed very, very fast. Uh, I can just remember several topics with regards to the technical solutions that were a couple of years ago uh, considered exotic and now it's part of the mainstream reduction uh, discussions uh, such as carbon capture on board for example. And therefore um, I'll back the fact that there are still uh, some there is still some uh, lack of clarity with regards to um, the different tools either on the regulatory side or the technology side are concerned. There is um, more awareness, there is uh, more information, the discussion has matured a lot and we see also a lot of synergies that are going to be um, uh, uh, developed and created. And that is, uh, I think, a, a very uh, optimistic uh, view of things and a very, um, uh, it, it incites a lot of hope. However, decarbonization has been in plan for many years uh, but the question is, do the new regulations take in mind the current geopolitical situation? The current geopolitical situation is another thing that complicates a bit, more or less, the short-term impact uh, of the requirements uh, for the energy transition. But decarbonization is, a, is not a, a short-term game, it's a long-term game we have to meet a certain level of emissions by 2050 and this requires planning from today. Now, the geopolitical environment that we live in does create um, some challenges with regards to uh, uh, energy availability, uh, feedstock availability and so on, but uh, the required energy sources that will actually fuel the mid and the long term are currently in development. We see, for example, the hydrogen value chain emerging that will be actually based on renewables or nuclear in order to develop that green hydrogen molecule that would actually be converted into alternative fuels. This is still in the making and it will have to scale up immensely. If you also overlay on top of that the fact that this type of feedstock, renewable energy, will also provide opportunities for energy independence, then what we see is that, if anything, at some point this transition, uh, this, this uh, geopolitical uh, state might accelerate uh, the whole thing towards the scaling up that I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So essentially, what do you think will be the next business plan? Hmm. What will it, yes. will it entail? <laughs> well, um, what we see is that decarbonization um, has so many elements uh, that need to be considered when you are strategizing your next moves that it will definitely cut across many functions, if not all functions of your company. What you decide with regards to the technical solutions or the operational improvements that will address the decarbonization challenge will of course have an impact on your environmental KPIs but it will also require you to think 
how you will also tackle the social aspect of your activities. How you, for example, are going to uh, start um, uh, training uh, your people into uh, acquiring new skills. How diverse your um, uh, workforce should be in order to tackle the challenge of the energy transition and the value chain that your ships are going to be active in. And how then will actually be linked with what type of risks, systematic and non-systemic risks, you will have to, uh, to face in a, in a robust governance um, uh, uh, framework. What I just inferred there was how you can actually implement decarbonization through the lens of sustainability and implementing a corporate framework that address all letters of sustainability, E, S and G, environmental, social and governance.